Sweaty? Nope, not yet. <sighs> Anything? How long does it take before something happens? Well, depending on the type of butterfly, it could take one to three weeks. Aw, oh, man! Plus, we don't know how long this butterfly has been a pupa. And even if we did, it's not exact. It can take a little bit more or a little bit less. So, we just have to wait and see. Right. <sighs> Place. It's where we found the pupa. And I think today may be the day. It's happening. Really? I think so. Look. Wow. wow. The butterfly is going to come out of the pupa and open its wings. And we're all going to be here to see it. Let's celebrate. Have a party. Pupa party, pupa party. it's going to be. Maybe it will be a morpho. Big and blue. Or maybe a swallowtail. Whatever kind of butterfly it is, I'm sure it will be beautiful. <coughs> huh? That's not a butterfly. Not even close. It's a beetle. Turns out our pupa is a green tiger beetle. Beetles have pupas? All insects do. Butterflies? Moths? Flies, mosquitoes, and of course, beetles. I guess I just thought it was a butterfly because of all the other butterflies around here. Sorry. Don't be. We got to see a metamorphosis. And it was amazing. <laughs> Let's take our pupa party outside and let this little beetle go home. Go ahead, little beetle. Thanks for letting us see your pupil stage. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta keep up to it. But not too close. Just close enough so I can see its camouflaging skills in action. Wanna take the wheel, Gorby? Do I? I mean, do you wanna drive? Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> The octopus must have gotten scared again and camouflaged itself. How can we get close enough to watch it without scaring it? Hmm. Stop the polymerine! <laughs> I'm having an engineering moment! Huh? That means she's got a great idea for something to build. Finished. <laughs> Gorby, would you please press the button? Oh! Boom! Whoa! Amazing! Our polo marine is camouflaged! Thanks, Willow! Now we can get close to the octopus without it noticing us! Along with any other cepha... cepha... Lepods! Yes, cephalopods who might swim by! <gasps> Look! There's the octopus again! <gasps> it's uncamouflaging! It doesn't see us anymore! You're better at hide and seek than you thought, Gorby! Hey! Go! 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 <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Nash. Now we'll blend in anywhere. Even in a herd of zebras. Octopuses, cuttlefish and squid. Chain sheep and collar, just so they stay hidden. Disappearing right before your eyes. It's nature. Like coral rocks 
and sand. They can change the texture of their skin. There they go again. Oh, you're so sneaky, cephalopods. Masters of mystery, all because of camouflage. I bet she can see me, cephalopods. Looking like seaweed, all because of, all because of camouflage. work and live together, it's called a colony. I wonder what kind of ants these are. Oh, look it up. Looks like they're leafcutter ants. There are leafcutter ants all over the rainforest. So they cut up leaves and bring them back to the colony to eat? Actually, no. They chew up the leaves and... They're turning them into goo. So they eat the goo? This is the amazing part. Another living thing called fungus throws its spores on the goo as it decays. The ants eat the fungus that grows from the spores. Unbelievable! They cut up the leaves to feed the fungus, and then they eat the fungus. These ants are fungus farmers. Wow, there are so many of them. It says there can be eight million ants in a colony. That's a lot of leaves to cut goo to chew, and fungus to farm to feed everybody. They must have to be really well organized to get everything done. <gasps> Organization. That's what we need to get all our stuff back into the polo mobile. We just have to act like the ants. Okay, remember, everybody pick up the first thing they see, bring it back to the polo mobile, and put it away. Then go back out and pick up another thing and bring it back and put it away. Just like the ants. Just like the ants. Let's go! <sighs> I think I picked up too many things. Whoa! Too heavy for you to lift, Nash. We little ants. Big. Ants can carry 50 times their weight. That's like you carrying 50 Nashes. <gasps> <laughs> Hold on. We'll help too. <laughs> yeah, and here we go. <laughs> now we just have to get it inside. Actually, I've got a better idea. How about lunch? Oh, yes. Yes. We carry it so we get to eat it. Yum, yum. But we don't have to turn it into goo first. I'm just glad it's not fungus. <laughs> <laughs> that piece of wood is full of grooves. Do you think those insects made them? Like maybe they ate the wood? Let's find out what they are. They're termites. Too bad termites can't talk. They would have been close enough to see what happened to the picnic log. I don't think so. Most termites can't see. Actually, I think we're just seeing a few termites. Look, termites live in colonies. There can be more than a million termites in a colony. A million? That's a lot. Around here, the colonies are underground. But in other places, they build these. Wow. The mounds are their nests. And at the center is the termite queen. It's her job to make sure that there are more and more termites. She is one big termite. It says that termite queens can grow to be as big as your thumb. She gets so big, she can't move around. So all of her children take care of her. So what do termites eat? Wood, right? It says here that most termites like to eat rotting wood from falling trees. That's one of the ways decomposition happens. Decomposition? What's that? That's when old rotting plants break down and return their nutrients back to the earth. So that new plants can grow. Hmm. I know 
what made the picnic log disappear? You figured it out? You know where the picnic log went? Yes. The amazing Lily will now amaze you by explaining the disappearing picnic log. Yay, amazing Lily! The picnic log was a fallen tree. Right. I just never thought of it that way. And fallen trees are the kind of rotting wood that termites like to eat. The termites made the picnic log disappear. They ate it. That's decomposition. Exactly. Now the only thing that's left of our whole picnic log is that one little piece of wood. And the termites are eating that too. That is yes. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So the disappearing picnic log isn't a magic trick after all. No, it's part of how nature works. I miss the picnic log, but I still like it here. It's nice to think that it's feeding other plants and animals so that they can live and grow. And speaking of feeding, picnic! And now I, the amazing Lily, will perform another amazing trick. I will now make the sandwich disappear. Huh? <laughs> Changing to Polo Marine mode. And down we go! Hey, it says here that the ocean has different zones that get different amounts of sunlight. Right now, we're in the topmost zone, called the sunlit zone. Plenty of sunlight can reach this area, but the deeper we go down, the darker it gets. Below the sunlit zone is the twilight zone. Here, a little sunlight can reach. And below that, deep, deep down, is the midnight zone. Light can't reach here at all, so it's completely dark. Wow! It's getting really dark. Uh, it's kind of spooky. I'll turn the headlights on. Whoa! What is that? A rat tail fish. It's named that because of its really long tail fin. In the deep ocean, only plants and animals that can survive extreme pressure live here. And most of them look very unusual. Ooh, like that creature. Yes, that's a type of sea slug called a nudibranch. It's cool, but I don't see Nash's dolphin. Ooh, what's that thing? What is it? Wow, jellyfish. <gasps> and they're glowing. When a creature can make its own light, it's called bioluminescence. It's very useful when there's no sunlight around. Lucky dolphin. <gasps> Nash, you found it. The glow from the jellyfish helped you see where your toy landed. Oh, yeah. Way to go, Nash. All right. We got it. Nice. nice. Good work, Willow. Dolphin. Here you go, Nash. Good as new. Ah. Wait. Wait. Just a little soggy still. <laughs> Of pictures. Okay, I'm done. Seagulls? Oh, this is bad. Seagulls are predators of baby sea turtles. Predators? You mean they want to eat it? But it just hatched. He's helpless. Poor turtle, poor turtle, poor turtle. Poor turtle, poor turtle. Grab it. Put it in the water ourselves. Huh? Nash says he wants us to pick it up and bring it to the sea ourselves. That's a great idea. Yay! Nash, wait. 
In nature, it's best to let creatures do things by themselves. We should only pick them up if there's no other way to help them. <sighs> Go away, Sagoth! If we could scare them off, it could give the turtle time to get back to the water. But what are seagulls scared of? Caterpillars? Thunder? Broccoli? Aha! Uh -huh. Seagulls are afraid of hawks. So we'll make hawk sounds. They sound like... Um, uh, I don't know about hawks, but your farm animal impressions are great, Gorby. Here's what a hawk sounds like. Nash, we need to be way louder to scare them. I've got an idea! Audrey, play the hawk sound through the polar boat speakers as loud as you can. Raising volume to maximum. <coughs> ah! oh, oh, oh man, that was loud! Look, it's working! Turn a one. One. Go, turtle, go. Go, turtle, go. Frog. Bye-bye, turtle. Take picture, take picture, take picture. You're right, Nash. Now would be a perfect time for a picture. All right. Let's take some photos. <laughs> of the sea turtle, I meant. <laughs> <laughs>